real quick. That's okay. I'll just use the uh... Okay. <laughs> okay. mentioned uh, the idea of this symbol and made some suggestions about what one of its meanings might be, eh? <coughs> that a human being is designed to have within them what this symbolizes, <clears throat> which is the meeting of two things. <clears throat> More or less, you can say that's the meeting of mind and spirit. And that none of us actually have one of those things. <clears throat> and one of the ways that we can understand this is that this is seeing the value of what is. Okay. Looking at what is and seeing something in it that has value to me. So we have two things here. We have the what is, and then we have the ability to look at it and see value in it. When those two things come together, there's a lot of different ways to look at this particular symbol. But it's always about the same thing, about two things that are working together. <clears throat> it says that when these two things meet, there's something very special that happens. Except that unfortunately, in most of us, those two are never together, are they? Ever. Because we look at what is, and we see it, and we decide that what's valuable is over here, somewhere else. Isn't that about right? <laughs> Just about all day long. This is not the way it ought to be. This is not good. This is not okay. It needs to be changed into something better. <clears throat> so what is is over here, and what we value is some other thing that is not present. It is only exists in our imagination. Isn't that about right? So we don't have a cross. <clears throat> So a man once upon a time, who seems to have been a little misunderstood on this particular subject, said, take up your cross and follow me. Remember that particular statement? And I guess a bunch of people, since he happened to have been tortured on something that looked sort of like a cross, thought that's what he meant. Why don't you go be tortured on one too? But that's not what he meant. This symbol is so ancient, I think it existed long before people decided to torture bad guys on it, isn't that right? You can find it in cave paintings, I understand, in you know, places like France, where they date back to times that we don't even have records of, you can find crosses on the walls. And that's what this symbol is about is about two things coming together. So for our purposes today, that's what we're going to look at. How often is the value, the good that I see in life, put on what is here now? And how often is it put on something that isn't here now, some imaginary thing that's in my head that I think should be here? <clears throat> Every time I do that, I put the value of this experience on some imaginary thing. 
I have no cross. I'm living a life where these two things that generate all the power in the human life is missing. <clears throat> so when we draw the picture of man, we talk about how when the awareness reports the what is, and it says that this what is is good, it activates all the power of life to respond to the situation. <clears throat> but when I look at this moment and I see something wrong with it, and I decide that it ought to be different, I'm on my own. Because I can't tell X what's going on. I'm too busy thinking about how it ought to be. And so I'm just trapped here in my little head trying to figure out a way to make things right. And I, I don't get that awesome <clears throat> relationship with spirit that responds to the event. Hence, the constant, ongoing whining. But I don't know how. <laughs> Every time I talk to somebody, and I kind of suggest maybe they knock off some of the weird stuff they're doing. That's what I get. But I don't know how. And I have to, because I'm trapped here. This part, this part of me is missing. <clears throat> so I got to do it all on my own. <clears throat> I got to think. I got to figure it out. I got to use logic. I got to use the mind. I got to do all this stuff and figure out how to do something because I can't talk to life about it. Because life don't hear me when I say that the value in this moment doesn't exist yet. It won't exist until you bring about some new thing. You don't even know what I'm talking about. And that's the way it is for most of us, isn't it? Here's what is over here, and somewhere else is what I value, isn't it? It would be really great if it were like this, but it isn't. Now, how much of the day is spent doing that? <clears throat> Looking at this moment, finding a flaw in it, finding something that's wrong with it, being disturbed, and seeing that it would be good if. And to take up that cross, we would have to decide that what I'm going to do is look at this moment and see something good in it for me all the time. that happens, <clears throat> man and spirit come together, <clears throat> and all the power that is inherent in the human being is unleashed, and you can pretty much do anything you like. So we've talked about this before. I can see it made a huge impression. <clears throat> uh, not enough to say, I'm going to see what happens if I take up that cross huh? and, and see where, where I end up. If I walk through life where within me there are two things that are always together that are normally kept apart. what is and the value of what is. Because they're normally always kept apart, aren't they? Whatever is going on needs to be changed somehow in order to be good. It is not good now. Isn't that about right? 
always something wrong with it. <clears throat> so the, what, the value is over here on a thing called what ought to be. What it is sits over here, and what ought to be, this imaginary picture in the mind, is where all the value is put. <clears throat> and I wonder why life is a struggle. Uh, I can say that obviously made a great impression. So I'm going to point out a little thing today. Uh, one way that a human being can pretty much determine that they are going to be conscious. And there's nothing that you can do to prevent this if a human being makes this decision. <clears throat> is decide to keep those together all the time. I will guarantee you that if you do that, <laughs> you will be conscious, period. So I'm taking this idea that we've discussed before, and I'm now issuing it as a challenge. <clears throat> you came here, you said you wanted to be conscious. Let's see if you mean it. Will you do what it takes? Uh, <clears throat> I know about three or four things okay. that a person can do that will pretty much guarantee that outcome. And I've almost never seen anybody do them. This is one of them. How do you like that? <clears throat> Would you like to put an end to the journey in the struggle and the putting it off till tomorrow and get it done? Well, this is one way. Uh, most. Most of them have something to do with, with this concept of bringing these two together. <clears throat> but I just thought it would be interesting to use this one, because to be blunt, I think the others are way out of your league. <laughs> I think you could might maybe do this one. <clears throat> the others probably are just too much. But I think you could do this if you wanted to. The, uh, Agree that if you really wanted to, you could look at this moment all the time, looking for something good in it, instead of what you normally do, automatically, without thought, like a robot. You have no problem looking at every moment and finding a flaw in it, do you? <clears throat> Why, you can do that in your sleep, can't you? It doesn't take any attention. It's automatic. The mind just delivers up to you a flaw in everything, doesn't it? Totally effortless, isn't it? You literally can do it in your sleep, huh? <clears throat> but I do believe that if you put a little bit of effort into it, that when the mind comes up and tells you what's wrong with this moment, <clears throat> you could say, hold off a second, I'm not through looking yet. And you could sort of keep looking a little bit longer and see if you don't find something good in this moment. You think that that's about right, that that's something within your abilities, you could do that if you wanted to. So this one, I think, is possible. <coughs> it could be done. <coughs> now I guess the question remains, uh, d do I actually mean what I say? Do I really want to be conscious, huh? Or, or was it just a story I was telling myself for a lot of years? I do not see any way that this can fail. I'm sure some of you will come up and show me how it can. But I don't, I don't see any way <coughs> that a person can actually do this and <coughs> not end up 
at least conscious. Uh, one may or may not be evolved and transformed and all those kind of things, but I think at least you wouldn't be walking around in your sleep anymore. <clears throat> I just don't see how you can walk around in your sleep seeing good in all things. Yeah. Since that machine is all set up to tell you what's wrong with everything all the time, isn't it? That's what it does at the drop of a hat. So what do you think? I think this might be an interesting thing to do. This may be a short weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Already got to the end. <laughs> I think you do, if you've been observing at all over the last few years, you can certainly see what happens when all the value is put on what ought to be, can't you? And it ain't the same, is it, as when you see something of value in this moment. There is a difference, isn't there? <coughs> Not so sure about that one, huh? Is that from lack of experience? I mean, what, what makes you <clears throat> so unsure about there being a difference between the two? You're gonna, you're gonna, you think it's the same experience when you look at this moment and you don't like it and you start fretting and getting upset and trying to reason out some way to fix everything, that's, a different, that's the same experience as when I look at this moment and I think it's just wonderful and I enjoy it. You don't see any difference between those two? That's really tough to understand. They seem like just outrageously different experiences to me. I don't particularly like it when the mind is running 5,000 miles an hour looking for a way out of the situation and a way to fix it and a way to make it better and a way to make me look good and a way to do this. and That, that drives me up a wall. But I kind of like it when I'm just sitting here, okay with what is, feeling kind of calm and comfortable and like I can handle just about anything that walks through the door. I, I sort of like that experience. It seems very different to me. <clears throat> I feel confident. Don't you feel confident when, when you're okay with things? I have a little sense of kind of being in harmony with things. I might even enjoy it. Wouldn't that be interesting? And that is not the experience that I get when I'm finding a flaw in it, is it? <clears throat> what I get then is a mind that just starts racing, trying to find an answer and then arguing with itself. And I get nervous and upset and all sorts of things. It doesn't seem like the same experience to me. Just a simple thing like that. Of uh, saying, I'm going to try and put the value on what is now. <clears throat> that doesn't mean that I can't see some way that it could be made better or I might like it more or anything else. Uh, that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at every moment that I'm experiencing and see if I can find at least one thing about it that I, I think might be good for me. Okay? <clears throat> Years ago, there was an 
interesting thing that happened, which I've talked about before. I moved into a house where the neighbors uh, didn't think that they were responsible for their dogs. So they just sort of let them run all over the neighborhood. And they have to keep them in their yard. <laughs> and one of those little dogs that ran the neighborhood thought it was great fun to bark incessantly. And I do mean incessantly. That dog would bark for hours on end without stop, without cease, hours in a row. And the favorite time to start was about 2 o'clock in the morning and then bark until 6 or 7 in the next day. Well, I guess it was the same day, okay? Every night. He would bark throughout the day, but about 2 o'clock, I don't know what happened at 2 o'clock, but he would start barking nonstop for the rest of the night until the sun came up. Now, <clears throat> if one looks at the situation and says, okay, here's what he is, and you don't see nothing good in it, how do you suppose you're going to experience it? Calmly, peacefully. <laughs> if you're lucky, you might sleep through it, I guess. But see, so Phil don't sleep too much, so that would sort of wake it up and like, that's it. That's about the only way I think pe most people would be able to take that calmly. Huh? I think everybody else in the neighborhood slept eight hours a night and they didn't even know this was going on. That's the only thing I can understand. <clears throat> but. Is that what's going to happen if you don't see anything good in it? You're just going to be totally at peace with this little yappy dog? Uh -huh. Are you going to day after day after day after day be threatened and stewed and upset? And so this little yappy dog gets to kind of run your life for a few hours every day, doesn't it? All it has to do is start yapping, and it gets to control the human, doesn't it? because you can't see anything good in it. It's just bad. You, you see the point? So as far as this one was concerned, this was an interesting challenge that life had brought. Can Phil see good in a yappy dog? And I gotta tell you, that for the first few weeks, the answer was no. <clears throat> and so I walked around just constantly ticked off for three or four hours a day. I could not see anything good. And not only the yappy dog, but the people who were supposed to be its owners. <laughs> and they were all monsters. And there was no peace for three or four hours a day. But I thought that was an interesting challenge. Can I find something good in this? Because I think I got a choice. Either I do or I go to war. That was one of the choices, wasn't it? I could declare war on the situation. And I, and I don't use that word lightly. Uh, when I was a little kid, I watched neighborhood wars. I know what would have happened if I'd gone over to people who don't feel responsible for something and told them that I'm demanding that they take care of it. I would have a war on the hand, wouldn't I? <clears throat> they might have to do it legally, but do you think there'd ever be another moment's peace in the neighborhood between the two of us if I went over and, then, and said, either you get that dog in your backyard where it belongs or I'm calling the pound? What do you suppose would happen if I did that? So I could have declared war and then lived there under siege for the next five or six years. That would have been a great idea. Or I could have gone on just holding it inside, poor pitiful me, feeling sorry for myself and being disturbed every single day for the next five or six years. Or I could see if I could find something of value in it. So I could go back to being at peace with the circumstances I was in.
I actually thought this was me. I looked at this situation and I said, this is great. Because right now I do not have the ability to love that damn little dog. And that is not going to stay this way. I can't live here and not love that dog. So this is a wonderful opportunity. Before I leave this house, I'm going to love yappy dogs. Or go crazy trying. One of the two. We'll see what happens. Of course, you know, the outcome. I hardly even hear the damn thing anymore. I know it still yaps, but I hardly even notice because I don't care. It doesn't even disturb anymore. In fact, most of the time I really don't even notice. <coughs> now the dog's getting old. He's going to kick off soon. I'm going to have the last laugh when I outlive him anyway. <laughs> he can't, can't quite run around the neighborhood so much. So. He still yaps, though. Every now and again, I'll, I'll hear him yapping, but it's a little feeble these days. It's not quite as annoying. Getting old. That has been funny, watching him age. This terrible problem is sort of like vanishing all by itself. But I think that's a really uh, dramatic illustration of what I'm talking about. Can I see something in this that is good for me? I don't see anything in the, in the situation itself that is particularly good, but I can see something good for me in it. By the time I leave this house that I'm living in, I'm going to have changed. And that dog is not going to bother me anymore. And I think that's great. <clears throat> you know why? Because I know a lot of yappy humans, too. <laughs> and boy, it would be nice for them not to bother me like that dog doesn't, huh? I mean, this is, this is not just a little dog, is it? There's lots of situations in our life like that, aren't there? Where whenever somebody does such and such, I get upset. I thought it would be pretty neat <clears throat> to not have that little trigger anymore that nobody could just walk up and yap, 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 and then I have to be upset until they finish. I thought that would be pretty, a pretty neat outcome, huh? To be able to be at peace was something that was quite disturbing. Now that's good as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> so this wasn't just Pollyanna. Make up some story that says it's good. I gotta live it out, don't I? And that's the catch to all of this. This is not a mind game. This is not uh, just some Pollyanna thing where you put a uh, weird smile on your face and go around saying everything's good while you hate inside, which I've seen lots of people do. <clears throat> Play the Pollyanna game, huh? Always talking all sweet and you look in their eyes and they're going, I shoot you. That's not what we're saying here. You, you got to actually do it. You got to find something good in it and then act on that value. So these two come together, OK? You can't play games and trick yourself and say, I really would rather have the ought to be, but I'm going to pretend. You've got to actually see something so good in it that you want the situation. And that's why I like that little example of the yappy dog. Because after seeing that there might be something really neat that could come out of this dog, I actually wanted him there. If anybody had come along and tried to get rid of him, I would have objected. Wait a minute. What are you doing taking that dog away? 
Th that's, that's my growth as a human being you're trying to steal from me. Without that dog, how the hell am I going to grow? And I would have been out there arguing with him. I wanted the dog there now. I was kind of curious to see how, just how long it would take to actually think that dog barking was okay. Like, is this going to take me a week? A month? Three years? It got interesting after a while. It did take a while, too. I got to admit, I did not do that one overnight. <laughs> <laughs> You understand? It's got to be real. You find something in it that is good for you. And that's what you perceive and that's what you act on. And then you unleash life on the situation. A lot of changes had to go on inside of Phil. To come to the point where that dog was okay. That did not happen overnight. A lot of things had to happen before that could occur. But the conscious part was instantaneous. All I had to do was decide the dog was good. And now I don't have to be unconscious about the situation anymore. I do not have to whine. I don't have to complain. I don't have to go throw poison meat out in the, in the street. I don't have to go to war with the neighbors. I don't have to do any of that stuff. Because just bringing these two together it pretty much brings instant consciousness. The situation is OK. I can look at it. I can experience it. And I'm, what's more, I anticipate that something really neat is going to come out of it. Make sense? Are there any questions or comments? Yes. Um, that's one of the things that um, often stops this one from seeing the value of what is. One of the things that what? That often stops or hinders. I, I, I don't give it time. I think, I, I think I'm supposed to to have feelings that it's wonderful and okay by the way. So when you were talking about the challenge. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So something comes up, and I don't see any value in it. And then I use the teaching idea, and I say, I should have seen value in it. So now, not only do I see no value in the original situation, but I see no value in the fact that I didn't see value in it instantaneously. So there is nothing good about this situation, is there? <laughs> Anywhere to be seen. I'm just off here in Never Never Land about how it ought to be. Sweetheart, I don't know if I can do that instantaneously. I, I'm sorry, but I'm just unwilling to beat me up every time I'm a little slow. And, you know, I, I'm kind of one of the smart ones who's fast. What I don't know. I'm sure glad I wasn't born stupid, or I, I'd be beating myself up all the time. Look, it took you five seconds to figure that out. Yeah, so? What's your point? Are you in a hurry? <laughs> All right, so it the took five seconds. I've got, got tangled in that. <clears throat> yeah. But it, it really is just letting the machine run so it can't see any value anywhere, anywhere. Uh, I don't see value in me now. I don't see value in nothing. Like, boy, am I in dead at ass land now, huh? Everything is wrong. <laughs> I, I don't like, I'm sorry, but I just don't like beating self up. You want to know why? You know why I'm so opposed to me beating me up? <laughs> I never noticed that any of you needed help. You seem to be doing just fine on your own. I do not think you need help beating me up, do you? <laughs> Now, you tell me that you don't live in a world about like mine. 
where it kind of looks like everybody else is doing a great job of beating you up, doesn't it? Do they really need help? <laughs> Do you need to pitch in? And I, I kind of think I could just sort of abandon the effort. You're doing just fine on your own. Hmm? So I'm sorry, I just don't feel like adding to that particular effort. It seems to be going along just fine all by itself. And at a certain point, I can't take it no more. So I, I just, I don't do it to self, okay? I'll let you guys do it to me. Not, of course, that you want to, but believe me, there's plenty of folks out there who do. <clears throat> and I can't believe it's any different in your life. Unless you live in a cave. Doesn't each and every one of you have plenty of people in your life who take on the job of beating you up and telling you what a rotten piece of junk you are? Anybody need, need some assistance? Because I'll help. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have that in your life, I, I'll help, okay? I'm good at it. But I have a feeling you already got that, don't you? Why do you need to help them? I don't particularly enjoy it. So I just don't see any reason to add to their efforts, okay? I won't do it. I just will not do it. Unless I fall asleep and just aren't paying attention, okay? I just I don't see any reason <clears throat> to help everybody beat up Phil. They seem to be doing just fine. I'd kind of like to maybe put a little effort into seeing that Phil is okay, personally. And maybe it won't hurt so much when everybody else beats me up if I think I'm okay. You folks do understand the idea of projection, don't you? <clears throat> if I don't think there's anything wrong with me, and I ain't beating myself up, and you come up and tell me how messed up I am and what's wrong with me, honestly, I kind of think you're cuckoo because I don't see it. Any more than it would make sense to me <clears throat> if you wanted me to put a cup of salt in, in the cereal I'm eating or something, okay? You could come up and make that suggestion. Uh, what that cereal needs is a cup of salt. Well, I don't think so. That's an interesting suggestion. I'm glad you don't like the way I eat cereal, but if you don't mind, I think I'll just sort of ignore your idea. It sounds very uninteresting to me. Honestly, how much attention would you pay to somebody who told you to put a cup of salt in your cereal this morning? You just kind of think they were goofy? Would you get all upset? Are you trying to poison me? Uh, wouldn't you just kind of look at them like they were a little goofy and say, okay, whatever. Excuse me, I'm going to go eat by myself now so you'll shut, leave me alone. Would you get upset about it? Unless, of course, you think there's something wrong with you because you don't want a cup of salt in your cereal, and then you're going to project your own problem onto them and blame them for it, aren't you? Because they came up and said you should have put a cup of salt in your cereal. That's projection. They didn't do nothing. They just said what made sense to them. You projected your own problem about it out into the world and said it, they were the cause of it. But you can't upset me about not putting a cup of salt on the cereal, you understand? Because there's just nothing in me that cares about that. <clears throat> Can you imagine how weird it would be if I decided to project blame on that? And we had the kind of conversation you normally do when somebody uh, makes fun of you. Uh, everybody around would think you were crazy, wouldn't they? Like, why do you care if this crazy person comes up and says, put a cup of salt on your cereal? I don't get it. 
It's just too out there, isn't it? It'd be really hard to get upset about it, wouldn't it? It's just too ridiculous. So I, I just don't think I need to do that. If, if I'm busy beating self up, that means everything that everybody else does, I'm going to project what I'm doing inside onto them and blame them for it and pretend like it's their fault and, and never get, this is my problem, not, they are, not yours. <clears throat> and if I stop doing that, you're doing it probably won't disturb me too much because I just don't care. It's not real to me. I do know I infuriate people on that subject because they try to convince me there's something wrong with me and honestly it's just not real to me and you can try all you like but I just sort of think it's funny. And that really ticks people off. That was not what they wanted the outcome to be. Somebody just laugh at them. But I, I'm sorry, I just don't get it. I don't think there's anything wrong with me. You can try all you like. I don't think I'm going to buy it. Any other questions or comments? I, I've got one. I saw that movie, uh, The Last Temptation of Christ, in the book. And uh, at the end of the movie, uh, Jesus is on the cross, and, the, and this angel takes the nail out and takes him down, and he lives his life with Mary Magdalene, and then she dies. I read the book. I've not seen the movie. By. What struck me about that was that when Judas came back in and said, you didn't, I did my part, you didn't do your part, it occurred to me that Christ, when he really saw the, the value of being on the cross and he really wanted to be that and he saw the good in being back there, he saw the good in the worst thing the world could do, he, he conquered the, old, the world. That just occurred to me about this. I actually don't know that that's the worst the world can do. But I think it's capable of far worse. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, an, it's an interesting book, but uh, it, is, it is speculation. But <clears throat> there is something interesting. When, when a person sees good in all things, there is something very interesting that happens. We don't know about it here on planet Earth because we refuse to do it. So it just remains a rumor. There may be something interesting that happens, but that is a fact. When you can look at every moment, and even if it takes you uh, half an hour of work, find something good in it. Uh, there's, there's something different that happens. You live a whole different way because you, you've got something inside of you that's functioning different than the way you normally do. There's a, just a whole flow of life's energy that happens that you don't know nothing about when you're playing this game. You're cut off. <clears throat> I find it interesting that uh, you know, people are always talking about separation, aren't they, in the spiritual circles. And nobody ever says how the separation occurred, do they? Have you ever read a description of how you got separated? Oh, all just this vague mumbo jumbo about, well, you do it up an ego. What the hell does that mean? <clears throat> how does that accomplish separation? I suspect this is how it occurs. This is where you get separated. Because you cannot look at things without finding a flaw in them. And by doing that, you've made yourself into God. How can you be one with God when you're trying to replace him? You're looking at all of his work, and saying you could have done a better job. 
So your every effort, every moment is to usurp God's position. That's what we're all doing 24 hours a day. Our great dream is to dethrone God and take over. And that and I have a sneaky suspicion that's where separation comes from. What do you think? I, I have a funny feeling that if I did that with a person, uh, we probably would not be living together for very long, and we'd probably separate after a while, wouldn't we? If everything they did, I found fault with it and tried to tell them how to do it better. I don't, I don't know if they'd stick around for that for very long, do you? I think I could accomplish separation really fast that way. Actually, I know I can, because it's one of the techniques I've used on occasion when I want somebody to go away. <laughs> of their own free will, so we didn't have to have a fight. That was one of them I used once upon a time. It was just started finding fault with everything they did. And after a while, they just said, I don't want to be with you anymore. I don't like you. And I said, OK. So that's what I wanted all along. I never reject anybody in this world. <laughs> Get them to reject you. Much safer. That's a little word of advice. So I do know that you can, you can uh, get separation that way. And I, I think maybe that sounds done. What do you think? <clears throat> uh, I can see how it happens technically. Because this thing does not occur where two things come together. In that point of intersection, is where that kind of interesting human thing happens. And it don't happen for us. No wonder we feel separated from everything. We don't have that in us, do we? Only for brief periods. Usually because I'm being titillated. Isn't that about right? It's about the only time I ever look at, the, at, at a moment and say, it's good, is because it's titillating. And how long does that last? Let's take a break.